Hello, my name is Steve Jordans, uh, and I recently gave a talk for uh, some of the alumni students from the University of Toronto uh, about some tips about interviewing. And uh, a lot of the people at the talk asked if I might record the talk and make it available um, because they believe some of their friends and some of their acquaintances uh, might benefit from it as well. So I decided to do that and just throw it out on the internet and, and hopefully it helps a lot of people. All right, so I'd like to start by saying uh, I am not uh, a business type person per se uh, or a human resources kind of person. I am a psychology teacher. I, I teach introductory psychology. Uh, so I know a little about a lot, I like to say, uh, but I also am director of the Advanced Learning Technologies Lab, uh, and in my position in the lab, I certainly do uh, bring people into the lab, sometimes uh, as students doing research projects, but sometimes, in fact, as employees. And so I have seen the hiring story from the side of the business, shall we say, uh, and I understand that perspective as well. So um, I'm going to try to take some of these things and combine them with my, my research love of educational psychology and maybe give you a slightly different perspective on how to prepare for interviews than what you might get from just perusing the internet. All right, let's just jump right into it. Um, I like to start just by saying the first trick to an interview is, of course, getting an interview. Uh, and it is amazing how a, a very simple concept can really predict success in, in this kind of realm. So there's a concept called grit, associated especially with Angela Duckworth. And um, here's a questionnaire, uh, or at least part of a questionnaire. Uh, here's the first six questions of an eight item so-called grit scale. So let's just look at a couple of these items. Uh, new ideas and projects sometimes distract me from previous ones. Uh, is that true or not of you? If that is true, then you don't have very much grit. Okay, so the more that's like you, the less grit you have. Versus, say, question two, setbacks, delays, and obstacles uh, don't discourage me. If that is true of you, then you have a lot of grit. So you can look through the rest of the questions and you can kind of get the sense of it. But grit is really about your willingness to persist and stick with something and keep going. And so when it comes to getting an interview to begin with, it's all about grit. Uh, of course, it's about your resume, preparing your resume well, and we'll kind of bring you know some of the interview tips back into the resume at the end of this. Uh, but I, I like to start out by saying, you know, especially if you get an interview and then don't get the job, you have to go right back into that getting an interview mindset, which means putting in applications and going and going and going until you get that next interview. So I just want you all to realize that that grit is so critical. Um, and ultimately, you will be rewarded for the time and effort you put in uh, as long as you stay persistent in the application process. But let's not talk about that too much. Let's assume, woohoo, you got an interview. Um, and so we're going to really kind of focus from, from this point forward. Uh, I, I've won the interview. Uh, it's coming up in a few weeks. What do I do? All right, cool. Well, the first thing I always like to, to the, there's a sort of famous um, saying, I guess, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. When it comes to interviewing, I often find that a lot of people are wasting a lot of time and energy and nerves on the things they cannot change. They will say things like, if you look at the bottom right side here, um, oh, they already know who they want for this job. They're, 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 this job was created for somebody. That might be true, um, but who cares? It's irrelevant. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, maybe they think there's some political forces. So maybe you're, you're a male and you're applying for a job and you realize that everybody that works at that organization is already male. So they're probably going to be looking for a female to even out their numbers quite uh, a bit. And so maybe you get worried about that. Why worry? There's nothing you can do about it. You are who you are. Um, and you can sometimes worry that there's trick questions or that they're up to something or, or they'll be... None of that stuff matters. You have to very early on in an interview think the following way. I have won an interview. And as I will point out to you as we go through, that means you have won something. Even if you don't win the job, 
you will gain valuable experience with the interview process and you will gain valuable feedback about how you can be a better interviewer in the future. So those two things you've got already, you've won them. Um, and the point is to sort of maximize them then. How can I make the most of this interview experience? You know, how can I first of all try to do as well as I can and if I don't get the job, how can I then um, mine the uh, feedback and, and learn from it going forward? Okay, so that's step one. Forget about all the stuff you can't control. Focus on what you can control and to a large extent that's going to boil down to preparation. Okay, so let's move along. I, I, I want to kind of give you a contrast. I want to, sometimes it's easy when someone starts telling you the right way to do things. Sometimes it's the nice place to start is with the wrong way. And what I've depicted here in this picture is, is a scene that plays itself out, I would say about three times a week in my office. Um, but let's imagine the woman in this picture is a faculty member working away at her desk. The, the gentleman at the, at the door is a student, peeks his head in, and he might say something like the following. Um, excuse me, professor, whoever, um, I'm hoping for a research career and I've been told that I need experience in a, in a research lab, that that would help me um, get the jobs I want. Uh, you have a research lab. Um, could, I, could I work in your lab? All right. Now, people say that to me all the time. And my, my immediate answer is, based on what you just said, no. Um, you've given me no reason to want to work with you. And in fact, sometimes I like to throw this at them and I, and I kind of twist it to them. And I'll say something like the following. Imagine you had just said the following. So I'll, I'll put myself in this perspective. So, so I'm a male. Uh, imagine I was looking to marry a woman. That was my goal in life. I want to be married to a woman. And imagine I approach some other woman and say, hello, how are you? Uh, my name's Steve and my goal in life is to be married to a woman one day. And I've been told that it's really useful to have some experience with women, um, that that will help me get to the point I want to get at. So you're a woman. Will you give me some experience? Uh, what's that woman likely to say? Well, maybe if you're Brad Pitt or somebody like that, she might say, sure, why not? Um, but for the most case, you've given her absolutely no reason to be interested in you. All you're saying is, I want something. You can give it to me. Will you give it to me? Uh, and the answer is almost always no. Uh, the point being here that it's a two-way street when you're applying for a job or, or even a research opportunity or something you have to give the other person a sense of why they want you, how they will benefit from having you as part of their um, company, as part of their business. Okay, so it can't just be about, I want something, you got it, can I have it? All right, and it's amazing. You know, I'll tell students, if you just learn a few differences, and, and let me give you the different way. Imagine somebody had come in and, and talked to me like this. Uh, Hello, Professor Jordans, how are you doing? Um, I know that you're really interested in educational psychology and that's something I'm really interested in as well. I find it fascinating. Uh, I've actually went and looked at a few of your papers. I, I got them from the library and checked them out. Uh, I especially like the paper about critical thinking where you were looking at how you know, we could develop that. And I have a few ideas of my own. Um, I, would, I would love to work in your lab, but I'd even love the chance just to talk to you about my ideas a little bit. Would you have a little bit of time? All right, so somebody like that is showing me that they've put preparation into what they do, that they actually know what I do, that they seem at least to like what I do, and that they might be an interesting partner to work with on the research, okay? So that's the example that preparation and, and, and some time in ahead can, that, how it just changes the whole dynamic. And I often tell students, if you just learn to do this, you will be head and shoulders above 95% of the students because 95% do it the first way, okay? So that's what I'm going to tell you too. You have an interview coming up, but don't think, okay, I just, I don't know, I just figure out what I'm going to wear and I go to the interview. Oh no, you have a lot of work to do before the interview. All right, so what kind of work should you be doing? Well, you should, certainly should be checking some things out on the internet. There are a lot of good um, websites that have a lot of good information. I'm going to be kind of pulling from this one um, 
uh, a little bit. Uh, graduate jobs, what employers look for. So uh, just a website I found about what employers are looking for uh, when they interview students. Okay, You should know this. You should have a sense. What, what do they hope to see in me? Okay, And from this website, they've highlighted five things that are important. And if you go to different websites, you'll get different things, but, but a few of them will be the same, and they're the ones I'm really going to focus on. Um, academic qualifications. Well, you are who you are, right? You're a graduate. Uh, hopefully you did as well as you could do at university, but your qualifications are now what they are. Short of going back to university, uh, there's not a lot you can do about those. The right soft skills, number two. I am going to talk about this a lot, okay? Soft skills refer to your interpersonal, intersocial skills. Let, let, let me come back to that and I'll unpack that in detail. International experience. Well, again, this is something you either kind of have or don't. Um, but even if you don't, you can think about what is it about international experience that employers like? And if you imagine somebody, some young person who you know, picked up and moved to a foreign country, maybe with a foreign language, threw themselves into that situation and found a way to, to survive and maybe even thrive, that tells the employer a lot about this person's sort of adventurousness, their openness to new experience, their willingness to take on a challenge, uh, those sorts of things. If you, maybe you haven't done that, but maybe you feel you have those skills, well, if you have no international experience, you might want to think of other examples that show you using those skills. And when you're answering questions, if you can sneak some of those in, that would be good, okay, to counter that. I'm not going to talk too much about international experience. Again, it kind of is what it is. Uh, a targeted job application, let's kind of come back to that at the end. We'll talk about you know, a lot of the things that they look for in the interview and then how maybe you can sneak some of those into an application. And ambition and flexibility. Um, what they actually meant on this website by, by these words um, was telephone. That's okay. I'm just going to ignore it. You ignore it too. Hopefully you don't hear too much. Um, what they actually meant by this is that, that employers are often looking for somebody who you know really does want to succeed and wants to advance in the job. That's the ambition part. Uh, and the flexibility that they're willing to um, work with the employer to find convenient ways to, to make the most out of their employment. Okay, So maybe they're w willing to work evenings, etc. That kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to talk more about attitude in the job interview and how you present yourself sort of emotionally and psychologically. It's going to touch on some of those things, but I'm going to be a little broader. Okay, So I'm going to focus on soft skills. I'm going to focus on what I'll call attitude, and we'll sneak in a little bit on the targeted job application. All right, let's get going. First of all, you have to understand the situation you're getting into. And I like to highlight the following. From the employer's perspective, they think of every interview as having three stages. And I think you should too. There's the prior to the interview stage. And this is where they're doing things like, you know, figuring out exactly what the job is and posting the job and, and um, you know, seeing a, a whole bunch of candidates and sorting out the candidates, all that kind of stuff. Um, for you, before the interview is when you're going to put your heavy time into preparation. Okay, So think of that as a step. The moment they call you and say you have an interview, you are now in stage one. And you want to do as much as you can from now until the interview to be ready for that interview. Stage two is the interview itself. That's what we're going to focus on. Um, and stage three is the post interview. This is where they're going to select an applicant. But notice, give feedback. You should have a post-interview as well, especially if you don't get the position. Um, and I'll certainly talk about that as well. But I want to focus more on preparation and preparation for the interview itself. Let me tell you a little bit about the interview and make sure, just in case this is your first interview, make sure that you understand that, be, that the norm today is what we call a structured interview process, which means the person interviewing you will have come up with a set of questions 
And these questions will be asked of all candidates. The same questions will be asked of all candidates. In fact, often the same member of the committee will ask the same question of all candidates. They're trying their best in this case to be as fair and even-handed with all of the candidates as possible. And so it's pretty well accepted that that's something you should do. You don't ask one person one set of questions and somebody else something else, because then how can you compare? Okay, you wanna be able to compare. So you're asking everybody the same questions, and that means for you, some of those questions might not seem to fit you very well, or maybe you feel like they should already know the answers from your, from your application package. But again, keep in mind, they're being very strict, same questions, the same people, so just accept the question at face value and try your best to answer it. And know, by the way, that when you answer it, a bunch of people will now put their heads down and be writing notes. And this will be a bit of an uncomfortable period uh, because you're just sitting there <laughs> while they're like all scribbling down notes frantically. They have to do that because that's their memory of you. You know, these interviews may take two or three weeks to conduct. And then eventually they're going to come back and try to compare your, these candidates. So those notes are their representation of you. You want them to take good notes. Uh, and therefore, you want to be sitting there very calmly and relaxed while they're taking notes. In fact, even more than that, this is, a, this is the tip I usually give. Before I go into the interview, I have some song. I always have a song that's my interview song. And it's a song, it's got to be an empowering song. A song that makes you feel strong, positive, like you're going to win this job. I recommend you be playing that song before the interview, get your psychology all up into that position of, all right, let's go, I wanna do this job, I wanna have fun. Um, and then during these note-taking times, you go back to your song. You sit there and quiet, you know, quietly sit there, but play that song on your head, feel the empowerment, get ready for the next question. All right, even if you think you blew the current question, by the way, even if you feel like, oh, I didn't do that very well, but they're taking notes, Put it out of your mind, it's past. Put the song in your head, get that attitude, and be ready for the next question. All right, so that's what's gonna go on, a whole lot of that. Now, it's important you understand the, the, the context here, um, not just from your perspective, but from their perspective. One of their major worries is that they will hire the wrong person. And the person they hire will turn out not to be to be not capable of the job that they're hired for. Um, and when that happens, a the whole interview process was a waste of time. But b you then have to figure out what to do with this person. Do you shift them to another job? Do you have to let them go, which is very uncomfortable for everybody, you know, etc. So it's a so from the committee's mind, what they're really worried about is the risk of hiring the wrong person. And so it's it's very important that you not feed that. Um, and, and the way people most often feed it is by giving answers off the top of their head and then saying something that isn't very well thought out but that rings that little worry bell. So if you wanna mitigate this risk, if you wanna to try to make sure you don't set off alarm bells, then you wanna be conscientious. And what's that mean? Well. These are the first things it means. Again, you have to be prepared. What are some of the preparations you should do? Whatever this company is, you should know them well. You should know, you know the, their size. Um, you should know how they're doing. Are they, are they you know, performing really well in the market? Are they under challenging conditions? Um, you should certainly know what sort of touch words they, they consider important to them. Like I, almost every company has pictures on the walls of, of how they're trying to um, convince their employees to you know think of this word. So it might be a word like innovation, for example. Uh, we want you to be innovative or creativity or whatever. Um, but what does this company pride itself in? What do they connect with? You should understand that and you should be able to resonate that with that. You should be able to say, that's what I care about as well. Um, and you should really appreciate the opportunity. So I want to highlight again, an interview is a win, okay? You've already won this opportunity to try to show yourself in your best light and you will potentially win feedback even if you don't get the job. So appreciate it. Go into this 
this interview feeling strong, knowledgeable about the company, and appreciate the interview itself. Um, you also want to be professional and personal. Um, so you want to be on time or maybe a little early. You want to dress for the position or maybe a little better. Uh, you want to smile and genuinely enjoy the experience. I mean, literally, it's a very good thing to start an interview and say, thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity to, to meet with you all today. And I really look forward to, to talking with you over the next little, little period of time. And mean that. This is going to be fun. This is a cool thing. And you want to keep that positivity in general. In fact, I'm going to talk about some answers to questions. And I think that being positive is uh, uh, an important point that I want to highlight a little bit more. When people go to work every day and they see the same people day after day and interact with these same people and, and try to uh, achieve goals with these same people, who are the people they want to be around? We don't want to be around people who are negative all the time, who are complaining about things, who are worrying about things, who are anxious, who are, you know, the, these balls of negative energy. They're not the kind of people we want around. The people we want to be around are the people who are positive, who are determined that challenges can be met and, and are looking forward to meeting them. They're the kind of people we want to work with. That's the kind of pe person you want to be in the interview. Okay, you want to have that sort of positive and so as much as possible your example should contain positive messages um, if you do have to touch on the negative you want to touch on it quick and then switch it to the positive and, and, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit okay all right just before I leave the risk as we transition to the next point the best way to mitigate risk is to give good strong well thought out efficient answers to every question. Now, you can't give a good, strong, well thought out, efficient answer to every question. Uh, and in fact, in the realistic sense, I tend to think of it more like in a, in a baseball example, where in baseball, if, it, if a batter gets a hit one out of three times when he goes to the plate, that's considered good. Um, so you don't have to answer every question um, really, really well but you want to get that hit rate as high as possible. You want to try to answer a lot of the questions well. And the more that you can get you know, all ready and, and, and kind of hit out of the park, um, the better. Uh, there are going to be a few questions that will surprise you uh, and that will catch you a little bit. And it's perfectly okay to say, oh, I didn't expect that. Let me think about this for a moment and do just that. Be quiet, think about it, and then try to give your best answer on the fly. That quiet period will kind of build a little bit of tension in the room, that's okay. If you have that song playing in your head, so much the better. Um, but then, as long as you end that tension with a relatively good answer to the question, people will feel really good about it. Um, and it's perfectly okay to, to show them that, okay, I wanna think on the fly, but I wanna do it in a conscientious way. Okay, I'm not just going to start blurting out what's, what's on my mind and say something stupid. I'm going to think about it and, and speak well. All right. So we would like, though, to give as many good answers as we can. Well, you say, how do we do that? We don't, we don't know what questions they're going to ask you. Um, well, that's sort of true, but there's a few things I want to put in your, in your mind. So one of them is, as we're continuing on context, keep in mind it's, just not, it's not just about the questions they ask you, it's about the questions you ask them as well. So as we kind of talk about the interview process, I'd like you to think of it more as a conversation and more of a, as a two-way interview. This is really hard for people because if you don't have a job and this person's potentially offering you a job, you want it, right? So it's just, so in, in reality, in your mind, is like, I want this job, I want this job, I want this job. You can't go into an interview with that personal style. Um, you have to be a little bit more like, wow, this is a good opportunity for me, I think. Uh, but I want to make sure, too. I, I, I've got a few questions. I've, had, I've got a few thoughts for you, too. And, and so to kind of have that mindset of both them seeing if you fit the job but you seeing if the job fits you and if the company fits you. 
The honest truth is, for many people, that first job they take, or those early jobs they take, set the path for their career. And so you quite literally do want to make sure this is the path you want to step on, even if it seems to be the only path available to you right now. Um, kind of fight that and think, no, no, let me think about this. Is this really what I want to be doing with my life? And you can prepare some questions um, that fit with that. Anything you might want to know more about the job or about the company um, to kind of think about that fit. If you can prepare some questions, then there will be points in the interview where you might be able to ask them a question. Uh, and if it's a good question, first of all, you can be prepared for that, right? You know what your questions are. Um, so you're putting them on the spot a little bit. Um, but if it's a good question, it also shows you to be a thoughtful person who, who cares about this fit between you and the job as much as they do. And that helps them worry less about the risk. Okay, this person really is making sure the job's right for them. Okay, so that's part one. Um, you can't necessarily know every question, but you can create some questions and have those in your back pocket. And at times when it's appropriate, use those. But also, you can answer the questions. You can, you can prepare answers to questions. Now. I will get to how you know the questions. Uh, but let me now talk to you about these soft skills. So, so first of all, let me just say what they are. These are, um, whoops, sorry. When, when, I'm gonna just fire them out here. There's been a lot of interviews with companies where the individuals in the companies are asked what it is they look for in employees. Or they're asked, what attributes of your employees have helped your company succeed? So what are these critical characteristics that a good employee has? You know, either something you look for in the hiring process or something you've seen play out and you value. So what are the skills you value? Here are, here's the sort of five that almost always make the list. Critical thinking. So I've got a few words here to give you a sense of what that means. Analyze, compare, evaluate, question, differentiate, categorize. So somebody whose mind does this naturally. When somebody is proposing an idea or a potential direction, often there are people in the room that are thinking about that. Is that a good idea? Is that a good direction? What are the potential problems? What are things we should be thinking about? That person is a critical thinker. And those critical thinkers prevent companies from making major mistakes. Okay, so they tend to be highly valued. Now on the sort of flip side of that is creative thinkers. Um, and I've got here build, modify, solve, improve. Um, if you think that something as expressed might not be the best idea, or if you think the direction the company is going might not be optimal, so your critical thinking kind of brought you there, well, the next question is, well, what should we be doing then? What's the better direction? Um, and people who can come up with these ideas, these creative people who think, well, maybe we should do this, or maybe our next product should be that, or whatever, these people are highly valued as well. And we kind of like these th things going hand in glove. May not be the same individual, by the way. Somebody might be very good at being creative, but they don't see the problems with their ideas whereas somebody else is good at being critical and sees the problems, or occasionally the same person does both to various extents. These are highly valued traits. Communication. And I have here expressive and receptive. Let me start with expressive. Um, expressive is your ability to literally get the ideas and thoughts that are in your head, out of your head, in a clear, efficient, powerful way. Okay, so they include written skills, they include oral skills. Um, and it's basically just that. How well can you express yourself? Every company values people who can express themselves well. It's almost like you need somebody to do that before other people can think critically or create creatively about the ideas. The ideas have to be presented in a clear form to begin with. Um, so that's a very important skill uh, for somebody to have. Uh, receptive communication is the flip side. The receptive communication part is how well do you listen to somebody else and really think about and understand what they're saying. Okay, So let me kind of show you how some of these things can come together. 
let's say somebody who's creative and perhaps a good expressive communicator suggests an idea. You know, I think this should be the next product our company builds. Um, now, well, let's say you did that. You did that, okay? That's your idea. You threw it out there. Um, and now let's imagine there's a critical thinker in the audience and that critical thinker says, okay, I see what you're thinking, that's really good, but I think I see a problem. And then now they start telling you about the problem. This is where receptive communication skills come in. What do you do? Do you just get angry? Do you just, you know, put your hands together and say, I don't want to hear about a problem, I just suggested this. Now you're like turning all over my good idea. Um, or do you say, let me listen to you. Let me hear what you're saying. And maybe you end up saying, oh, shoot, I never thought of that. That's right. But what if we now, you know, etc. So somebody with good receptive communication skills listens to the thoughts and ideas of others, thinks about them well, and either modifies their own behavior or their own ideas um, to make them better in light of that. So communication is both of those, okay? Collaboration, that just means your ability to work well with others. I know you guys all hate group projects when we do them at university. The reason we do them is because when you get in the workforce, almost everything is a group project. Uh, and so we're trying to you know, foster those skills and, and create those skills um, so that you can claim that you have some experience collaborating. Uh, very important skills. Metacognition. Metacognition is almost connecting some of those things that I've talked about already. I like to just colloquially talk about it as how coachable you are. They talk about this with athletes, that, that a certain athlete um, might be out there trying to accomplish some goal, you know, typically to win a game, and they're, they're engaging in a set of behaviors to do it. And a coach might be watching them and saying, okay, I know your heart's in the right place, I know you're trying, but there are things you are doing that aren't good, and there are things you are not doing that would be good. So let me explain to you how you can improve. And this is another one of those situations, but very personal now, where you have to you know, decide, like, do, am I just going to get angry again? Or am I going to listen, receptive communication? Um, what makes this different from receptive communication is it's really about me. And it's really hard. And it's one thing to have your idea attacked. It's something else to have your behavior, um, your, your performance being attacked, let me say, critically analyzed by another. But if you can listen to that well, and if you can think about it, and if you can actually show change in your behavior, that's what we call a coachable athlete. So the coach says, try this, and they try it. Coaches love that. Okay, so now they can play with things, but they need the athlete to play along, to listen to them, and to try to alter their behavior as directed. Um, and that involves metacognitive skills, learning about yourself, learning about your strengths, learning about your weaknesses and addressing them. These are the skills employers want. These are the skills you want to be hinting at when you give your answers to questions. You want to kind of give a picture underneath, not necessarily explicitly, you don't go and say, oh, by the way, I'm an excellent critical thinker and I'm an excellent creative thinker and I'm great at expressive communication, um, no. What you want are examples from your life history, from your work history, that show you using these. It's one thing to say you're a critical thinker, it's something else to provide an example that shows it. Okay, and it's, it's in fact better not to say these words, but instead to give examples that show you utilizing these skills, because that's what the committee will resonate with, and that's what they will think, oh yeah, yeah, that was a good answer. So a good answer is one that shows you using one or more of these skills. And you want lots of good answers. By the way, I just there, these uh, networking things, often these networking things for people are about these skills, an informal way of trying to get at these skills and seeing if somebody can use these skills, especially the communication, of course, but also, you know, people are talking about ideas and whatnot, so critical thinking, creative thinking starts to come play. Uh, and if people see certain individuals good in those, they become more interested in them as, as potential employees. All right. Well, great. So, Jordan, so you're telling me I have to give a bunch of good answers that show these skills, but I don't know what the questions are. Well, again, this is where I like to say, well, 
you won't know what all the questions are. You will be surprised by a few questions. But I can bet with some good preparation that you can know about half at least, if not more, of the questions you'll be asked. At least the kind of question. And you can, even if you don't get asked the exact questions you're preparing with, your preparation will get you used to how to give a good answer to a question, any question. But again, the really cool thing is when you look online for standard interview questions, look at the kind of websites you get. They will show you very common questions. And so these are great questions to start practicing the skill with. How can I answer that question in a way that shows my soft skills? through examples from my personal life. Okay, that's the real question. Um, I went to this 10 most common interview questions um, and I've just picked five of them out of here. Uh, just to kind of show you the preparation process I really recommend you engage in. Um, so let's just jump in. Here's a common question. Tell me about yourself. So they give you a sense here. This means give me a broad overview of who you, who you are, professionally speaking. Um, you should prepare about a one minute answer that summarizes where you are in your career and what you're especially good at with an emphasis on your most recent job. Uh, keep your personal life out of it. Okay, so this is what they'll tell you online, but I wanna take it that step further and say, think about those soft skills. Uh, and so let me just try to give you a bit of an answer to that. Let's say I wanted to show some critical thinking and maybe some communication. I'll focus on critical thinking here, but this might be true of somebody. So they may have worked in, in um, uh, customer service at, let's say, uh, Walmart, something like that. So you, know, you might think that's not the best job for me to show my skills, but with the right example, it could be. So you might say something like this. For a while, I worked in customer service. And I did, a really, I did really well there because when somebody would come in with, with something to return, I wouldn't just accept that the, there was a problem. I would talk to the customer about the problem um, and very often what, what I found was that it was a misunderstanding. They didn't know how to use this thing right or they didn't know how to set it up right. And sometimes when I just spoke to them for a little while, they ultimately left the store with their product and they were happy because they now knew how to use it or whatnot. And of course the store is happy because we don't like a lot of things being returned. And so that was one less thing being returned. And it turned out I had a real knack for it. I was good at this. Okay, so let me highlight a couple of, of things here. What we're talking about is being positive. I'm good at this. Let me tell you about something you know uh, that I did. You're doing critical thinking. You're not just accepting something as not a good fit for the customer. You're looking into it. You're talking to them about it. You're communicating receptive and expressive um, with them. So you're kind of showing in this very mundane situation of a return at Walmart that you're using these skills. Okay, And that, that could be something you want to highlight about yourself if you think these sorts of skills are important for the job. Let's try another one. What interests you about this job? very high likelihood you'll get a question that's that's pretty much exactly like that. Um, well, you really want to talk about the job, first of all, the substance of the job. So as it says here, don't talk about benefits, salary, short commute, anything like that. Um, that sounds like the perks of the job. You want to say it's the job. I, I find this job really fascinating. I find it, you want to show some passion and some interest, okay? So you certainly want to do that. Um, but you can also try to connect it again to the soft skills. So let's say we're talking about creative thinking. Um, and, and maybe the job is one um, that involves, um, oh, let me just pick a job. So maybe it involves you working with um, interfaces for websites. And uh, maybe the group you're working with does some testing to see how people navigate a website. And ultimately, of course, you want to find out when they have problems, when, when they're not navigating the website well. So maybe that's you know, a big focus of your job. But if you want to highlight creative thinking, then you might want to say, well, what I really love about this job is that you know, we're looking for these problems. We're lo yes, we're looking for these situations where people um, get confused on the website. But that's going to naturally, I love to think creatively, so that's going to naturally start 
um, promoting some ideas in my head about how we could do this better and what would be a more natural path for these guys to follow. Um, that's the kind of thing I really love and I see a whole lot of potential you know, to both be critical here but also to be creative. Um, and, and that's why it's really cool, all right? So again, try to use that, that option to kind of highlight that facet of you. Let's do another one. Why would you excel at this job? Um, well, yeah, so this is where you want, this is the, the anti-risk question, right? Um, I mentioned that the employees are worried about hiring the wrong person. Well, what they would love is to hire somebody that would really, really do well at this job. Um, and so you have to have a good, strong answer. Um, and it should be very honest. Again, thinking about the job, you've done research at the job, you should understand it well, and you want to make the case here for why your personality characteristics fit those of the job. Um, if we again bring it to the communication, in this case communication, back to those um, you know core competencies I sometimes call them, let's say it's a sales job. Now a sales job is not usually uh, something people consider very exciting um, to get, you know, calling a bunch of people and trying to convince them to buy something. But imagine you re reacted to one like this. This is a, a sales job. For me, sales means showing the customer how this product will improve their lives. And I really enjoy finding the best way to do that. So if I were gonna go on, I'd say, you know, some customers might not immediately see the value that, that our product has, but it's a really, really cool product. And I know if I presented it in the right light that they would see the value and they would be interested in purchasing it. So a real fun part of this job is figuring out what that sales message is, you know, how to present it in the best possible way. Uh, an answer like that, you know, is making A, you sound, it sounds like you're excited about a sales job. That's good, that makes them feel like, okay, they'll probably do well if they have that passion and enthusiasm. But you're also saying, I like to find powerful, efficient ways to communicate. And that's the crux of a sales job, right? That's what makes a certain salesperson better. They've found the buttons to push uh, on the customer. Uh, and so if you enjoy trying to find those buttons, cool, all right? Good way for you to highlight communication. Couple more. Tell me about a time when. Okay, there will always be, it'll be like when there was some problem or things weren't going well and, and you had to somehow um, start over on something. They, they will, sometimes these are doom and gloom kind of questions, all right? They're trying, to, they're trying to give you a sense of how you met obstacles often and how you dealt with them. Um, so it says things like situations like where you had to take initiative dealing with a difficult customer or solving a problem for a client, etc. Um, again, you know, I, I've said this over and over, but prepare for these questions so you're not struggling to think of real examples. It's, it's really not good uh, at an interview. Um, you want to do it as little as possible to go, oh, oh, wow, let me think. I don't, I don't know. You know, when you're like, I don't have a good answer for that. That is not, uh, you know, forget the question. It's just the fact that you're not prepared. And that's a very scary signal to send. So absolutely, you should have some of these examples. You should have thought of examples when you've had to encounter challenges or difficult people or, or you know, things like that. If you look online, you'll see a lot of the variants of this and prepare the answers for each of them. Um, and, and let me just say, by the way, again, I want to emphasize that pre this practice you're engaging in of preparing answers for these kinds of questions will help you for the questions you didn't see before. Um, it suddenly comes up and that'll remind you, okay, I didn't see that question, but there was this one I did prepare for that was kind of similar, so maybe I can just kind of take uh, what I was thinking for that and repackage it for this situation. Okay, and, and I know how to package it because I've been practicing this. So that, that's why you want to prepare. Sorry, I just had to go back into that. So let's say with this question, it was collaboration we wanted to highlight about ourselves, our collaborative skills. So we might say something like, well, once in my previous job, there was a group of us that were supposed to work together to produce a report. 
but it wasn't working because let's say you know everybody had time scheduling issues and we spent all our time just trying to get in the same room and um, so we wasted all this effort just trying to make the meeting happen and then we got very little done in the in, in the actual meetings themselves uh, so what I, what I did is I uh, found some virtual meeting software we could use so that just because people were in different places didn't mean we couldn't meet. Uh, and plus we had a record of our meetings that came from that. When I combined it with a Google Doc, we were able to keep, you know, whatever. Um, but something that shows in, in that case your ability to take a group of people and get them working effectively together um, would suggest that you have good collaboration skills. So again, if you have a question like this, yes, answer the question, obviously. But if while answering the question, you're highlighting your ability to collaborate uh, or think critically or think creatively, etc., so much the better. One more, okay? Um, I, I like this one because I want to come back to that negativity and positivity. Why are you thinking about leaving your job or why did you leave your last job? So questions like this point you towards what sounds like a negative experience, okay? Um, you're not happy in your current job. What makes you think you're going to be happy in this job? Okay, so there's almost, there's almost a suggestion here that you, you have to come up with some difference and you have to kind of point to the old job as, as negative in some way. Uh, and that's really tricky. So here it says, don't discuss conflicts with your manager or coworkers, complain about your work or badmouth employees. You don't want that negative air around you. Okay. So here it says that you're seeking new challenges. Um, but again, yeah, if you're specific about that challenge, if the new job offers you some opportunities that the other one didn't, that's okay. Um, but um, it, it's okay to do other things. So this said financial instability. Okay, that, that, that's fine. Um, let me give you an example that kind of highlights metacognition. If you wanted to say how coachable you are. Uh, and I am going to dip into this being a little negative, but I want to show you how you can flip that uh, without being too negative. So you can say things like, while I really like my current managers, imagine you're in a job. So I really like them personally. They're great people. They just aren't very good at letting me know how I could improve. Okay, so you're not saying they're jerks. You're not, you're not bad-mouthing them in a really negative way. But you are highlighting something that you want to run with for the metacognition. So you say, they just, you know, I would have my year-end reports and stuff, and mostly they'd say, yeah, things are going well. Well, that's all well and good, but I'm the kind of person that wants to continually improve and get better and better and better. And I need my managers to, to give me clear information about what I'm doing well, but also what I could improve on. And I really get the sense that that's the environment here, that I would get that kind of feedback and I could use that feedback to become a better and better employee. Okay, This is music to most people's ears who have jobs because to the extent this person isn't perfect, your next question is, well, can they become perfect? Can they learn how to do the job if they're not very good at it to start with. And if they're the kind of person that's telling you, I want to learn, I want to get better, um, then that, that's really cool. So you've taken this you know, negative sounding thing, and yeah, you had to say something a little negative about your current job, but then you immediately follow that with something that in their mind would be really positive. I want to be the best employee I can be. All right. Those five as examples of linking your questions to those soft skills, um, sometimes never even mentioning what the soft skill is, but every time you can do that, every question you can answer that kind of connects to that ends up reinforcing that image of you as a critical thinker, a creative thinker, good communicator who likes to collaborate with others and is constantly looking for ways of making themselves better. Um, that kind of image is a very powerful image um, to, to, to get out there. Okay. What if you don't get the job after all that? Um, well, let me just reinforce. A, you've learned a lot through that interview process. All of that preparation, all of that practice, you've now got in your back pocket. For your next interview, you can build on that, um, but you're already way better off. So this interview, even if you don't get the job, has already been a great help to you. 
and you should think of it that way. So if you don't get the job, um, that's one thing you have and there's another thing you have. So I highly recommend and I have a whole talk on this so you can search YouTube how to fail with my name. You'll find this other talk. Um, but the punchline is this, get back in touch with those people um, and say very clearly, I know I didn't get that job. I'm a little bummed out because I really wanted that job. But just like I told you in the interview, I really want to learn how to be a better person. And that includes being a better interviewer. And I know you guys took a bunch of notes when we were interviewing and that you probably compared me with other candidates. I would love at your convenience um, to, to know a little bit more about what I didn't do well and what I could do better. Uh, but let me just let me, let me just say very clearly, I really appreciate the whole experience you've already given me. I've already learned a lot. I would just like to learn that next little step. Okay, so that's even if you don't get the job, you continue with the positive attitude, you continue with the appreciation, and then you get everything you can in terms of feedback that you can use to improve. And so that's I just gave you my 54 minute talk in like two minutes. Um, all right. At the end of every interview, you will be asked if, if you have any questions for them. Um, there is a wrong answer to this one. The wrong answer is no. <laughs> no, I have no questions. If you say no, it sounds like you just want to get out of this room as quick as possible. And I understand that for some people after this whole interview situation, you might want to just get out of the room. But um, fight that urge. Uh, you want to end on a strong note, there's a lot of good psychology, by the way, that says that people remember how things started and how things end. That's what they remember. So you can make a good first impression at the beginning and you wanna make a good final impression. With a question like this, which will almost always be your final question, you wanna go back to that thing I told you before about the conversa conversation. You wanna show that for you, this isn't just about you asking for this job. It's about you deciding if the job fits you as well. You are a career-minded person. If you're going down this path, you're gonna go down it seriously. This is the impression I want you to give. You're gonna go down this path seriously and it could become your career. You could spend the rest of your life um, in this company, you know, ho hopefully going on to better positions or whatnot, but this could be your career path. And so you wanna make sure this is the career path you want. So near the end of that interview, when they ask you, do you have any questions? You should have a few. Um, they might be questions about the company and where it's going and where, you know, where, it, where people in the company kind of think it'll be five or 10 years from now. It might be about the job itself, you know, um, to get a little bit more specifics about the job to make sure it's really cool and one, one that you like. Um, and to which if they say anything, you almost always go, oh, cool, good, that's what I hoped. Um, and it may also be questions about possibilities for advancement. You know, if I take this job, um, does that open up other possibilities? Um, that's showing yourself to be a little bit uh, of that, you know, interested person in advancing as you go. Do not ask about um, money, salaries, perks, any of that stuff. That stuff can wait until you've got the job offer. Okay, when you get the job offer, I, I should almost do a whole other video about when you get the job offer. But when you get the job offer, then you want to go into that sort of negotiation. Uh, but at this step, it's all about you seeming to care about the job that's available um, to make sure it's right for you. And you should absolutely have some questions uh, about that. All right. Cool. So these are the these are the core points. You know, make sure you prepare, 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 prepare. I mean, look good. Um, you know, smile, be nice, be strong, be empowered. But as far as the the preparation, know the company, understand the current opportunity. So what is this job, uh, and what jobs are related to it? So make sure you really understand what it is you're interviewing for. Look and act professional while always being positive, energetic and genuinely, it's funny how I say this, and genuinely seeming excited about the job. Interviews will go better if you are genuinely excited about the job. So if nothing else, if you can convince yourself to get excited about the job, better, because they, they will sense the genuineness um, you know, in your body language. So you know, hopefully you, you are excited about this job, and if you are, 
let that come through all right prepare answers for likely questions you're not going to get them all but you can get a lot and in preparing for the ones you do get you're also helping yourself be ready for the surprise questions um, when answering them you want to answer the questions well but you also want to see every question as a chance to highlight your relevant soft skills um, and, and especially the way those soft skills are relevant for this job so that's the kind of piece I think I'm adding to, to the advice you'd get somewhere else is this notion of of keeping those soft skills in mind connecting to them often so that you give this this impression of yourself as somebody who has those soft skills if certain skills by the way seem more relevant to the job then prepare answers that highlight those skills more or if certain skills are more you then feel free to be honest about that. These are the skills that I think I'm really, really good at. All right? So that's the summary. When this is a live talk, I now throw this out questions for you guys. Um, but all I can say instead is um, here's my email address, uh, my Twitter feed, um, and I'm going to leave it there. I hope this was helpful. All right? Thank you. Bye-bye.